Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo All Sliders Explained, the show where we describe and explain you every single slider in this powerful photo editing application. Now if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder of Clever Photographer. Now before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you our own and very popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So stay until the end so you can get your own copy. The second, if you want to follow us along, make sure you head into the description, follow the link there and get your sample files before we're going to start. If you don't own Luminar Neo, you can also follow the link in the description and use our own discount code Clever Photographer. That way you get additional 20% off and you can get your own copy. And finally, we want to ask you to like and comment on our videos and also follow our channel so we can keep creating content like this. Today's video tutorial will be a quick one, however it should be a lot of fun as we're going to be looking at the classic film grain tool. Now looking at the tool itself, the film grain tool recreates the structure of an analog film. It does it by introducing random stylized grain to your image. You should use the grain to give your color or black and white photos a cool analog feel. However, it's important to remember that the grain and the noise are two different things. Grain is something you introduce to your images to add the old vintage feel, while the noise is side effect of a high ISO or other digital side effects. So that's that. And I think to start with, we're gonna use this blue square right here so I can explain you what the sliders in this tool do. So we go into the editing module, and we are in the creative tab, looking all the way down at the film grain tool right here. Now the film grain has a three sliders, amount, size and roughness. And once again, as you can see, the size and roughness are grayed out. And that the reason being is that they are connected to the amount slider. So when the amount slider is on zero, the size and roughness is switched off. So let's give it a go. Let's talk about the amount slider first of all. The amount slider controls the degree of graininess in the image. So looking at the, the blue square, when I bring this up, you can see how slowly, slowly we adding more and more grain to the image. And then we go all the way up to really see what we get when we push it all the way through. And once again, I really want to ask you to push the sliders all the way up to see the effect of the tool. So that way you can understand what I'm talking about. Now to reset any slider in Luminar Neo, all you need to do is to double click on the name of the slider and then it resets it to zero or the original value. So let's bring it up again. And by moving the slider, you can see that we activating the other two sliders. And let's talk about the size. So this slider adjusts the size of an individual grid. Grain. So size of an individual grain on the blue square. So by pushing it up, we should be increasing the size of a grain. And you can really see the difference. Let me show you when we do it. Before, much, much finer, much, much smaller. After, much bigger with much more impact. And finally, we have the roughness and this slider allows you to select the coarseness of the grain. So again, we can really push it up and make it really full of impact and power, or we can bring it down and make it much smaller. So three different sliders to work with. I have a two examples we can use and uh, we can have a little bit of fun with this tool. So as I said on the beginning, you can add the grain to the black and white image or color image. So let's start with the black and white image. We're gonna use this image right here and we're gonna move into the editing module. However, as you see, it's color image. So first thing we wanna do is to use the black and white tool in our essentials. And again, if you never used this tool before, you can simply follow our tutorial and the link to it should be in a corner. What you do is you just convert it to black and white and then you can do other adjustments to it. However, I think what we're gonna do, we're just gonna bring some of the contrast down. So we're gonna move into the develop panel and here in the develop panel, we can just look at the smart contrast and bring the smart contrast down. So that way we make it much less contrasty and we, it looks much more like the old analog days. One more time, if you never used the develop tool before, again, there is a link in a corner of the screen and you can just see how every single one of these sliders work. So we close this 
and we can move our attention back to film grain. So we have this nicely done and now we can really push the film grain up and make it look like an old picture. Let's, let's do something like this. Um, maybe the size can be a little bit bigger and maybe a little bit more roughness to make it a little bit more um, greenier, maybe a little bit more of the amount. And that's about it. One more thing I would do, I would move into the vignette tool here. And again, similarly, I will repeat myself. However, I think it's good to know that there are some references. We have a tutorial for the vignette tool and it's in a corner of your screen now. And what we do, we click on choose subject, then we center the vignette around the lady and then we bring down the amount, really bring powerful vignette around it. So let's have a look at before and after. And you can do that by clicking on this little eye here. This is the before, this is the after, making it look so much more like a vintage image. So that was taking your picture, turning it to black and white, making it more kind of washed out look, and then applying the grain and then adding some nice vignette to it. But you don't have to use the film grain just for black and white images. You can also use it for colorful images. So we go back to our catalog. And for the second example, we're going to use this image right here. And again, similarly, if we just add the grain to it, it's not going to look realistic. So I think we can do something a little bit different here. And this time we're going to use the mood tool. Now we don't have the tutorial yet, but as soon as it's going to be ready, again, the link's going to be in a corner of the screen. But basically the mood tool works with LUTs, the color lookup tables. So we click on choose LUT and I already know that we want to use the one from 1960 because that's going to be really cool. The effect isn't strong enough. We just want to increase the amount until to the point when we like the result. So maybe a little bit extra contrast less saturation and we get something like this. Then to add something on the top of it, we can go back to our vignette tool. Again, choose the subject around the lady and bring it down to create a stronger vignette. And we can even round the vignette to make it a little bit more realistic. So I think something like this. And again, we're going to finish it with the tool we are focusing on today, the film grain where we push the amount really heavily to see what the result is. Maybe not that much, maybe a little bit less. I also think that we bring the roughness down a little bit with the size to make it a little bit more fine and get the result we like. Once again, we can click on the eye here to see before and after. And I think the difference is huge. And of course, you can do a whole list of other adjustments here. However, this will give you an idea of what you can do with this super cool tool and how you can create vintage effects. So once again, the film grain tool, you set up your amount with the slider right here, and then you can really fine control the grain itself by adjusting the size and the roughness. So now it's time to get your own Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. All you have to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift and get it right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to follow our channel and also check out our other videos covering Luminar Neo. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next one.